Are you ready? Your new 2021 Miss Montana USA is... Jamie Forsyth! The new 2021 Miss Montana USA. Yeah, I think it was just the first time I competed and watching my sister compete. I just knew that it fit me so well. Both of the systems are so incredible. I think that girls will compete at both and see that one suits them more than the other. And yeah, the Miss USA system, I just had so much fun. It fit me so well. And I grew up watching Miss USA. So that's kind of what I always had my eyes on and didn't compete anywhere else. <laughs> The first thing I did, you can see in my crowning video, I'm pointing at somebody and yelling, I'm going to Miss USA. And it was actually my mom and dad in the audience. And so the first thing I wanted to do was just look at them and say, oh my gosh, this 10 year dream in the making is finally happening. finally happening. And I was just in shock. I think I blacked out for a little bit, honestly. But the very first thing I wanted to do was just go hug my mom. So you can see in my crowning video, me pointing at my mom. <laughs> my style on the stage. I have really grown into wanting to be more glamorous. When I first competed, I would kind of cover myself more, wear muted colors. And this year was the exact opposite. I was wearing, my swimsuit was bright red. My evening gown was made by Day Galaviz and it was lavender and silver rhinestones on a mesh bodysuit. It was so glamorous, so pretty. And I just really felt my most confident on stage. So it's gonna translate into Miss USA. I really wanna wear bright, bold colors. When I first decided that I wanted to compete for Miss Montana USA, I didn't want to become this great person after I was crowned. My whole process of training was, I want to live like I am Miss Montana USA right now. And I have had foster siblings. I've worked in daycares and taught vacation Bible school and 4-H camp every year. So I've been around younger girls my whole life. And I just really wanted to live as a role model and be someone that deserved being a role model and deserved this crown. So it is a huge responsibility and I take it seriously for sure. Between Teen USA and Miss USA? Yeah. Yes, for sure. It was a lot bigger of a change than I expected when I went from winning Montana Teen to competing for Miss Montana USA the first time. The questions that you're asked in interview are a lot different. I think they just expect a lot more from you. When I was a teen, it was kind of, oh, well, I, I think I might want to do this someday. And I'm, these are my dreams. And that's still the same thing now. I'm still pretty young and I do have my aspirations, but they wanted to know that you were taking the steps in that direction and that you were in school, you were volunteering and you were doing what you wanted to do to reach those goals rather than just wishing on it. And you do have more of a responsibility as a role model, because you are a little bit older and being, being a Miss USA title holder versus Teen USA, there's a lot more eyes on you as well. I was actually able to teach a self-defense class a couple of weeks ago to um, a group of women who had all survived human trafficking. And Seeing all those women so excited to learn how to defend themselves and feel empowered by taking their lives back and knowing how to fight somebody off if they're going to try to hurt them was one of the most incredible days of my life, not even just this year. So I really want to continue or move that forward. And even after I give up my crown in September, continue to teach self-defense classes to women around Montana and human trafficking survivors. I'm really excited. It's going to be so new because we have a new president for Miss USA and we've actually just had our orientation, our first orientation over Zoom with all of the contestants who've been crowned so far, so far and um, our new president, Crystal. 
And it was just really exciting, her vision for Miss USA. And there's a lot of things that I can't say right now, but I think everybody, the pageant fan community is going to be really pleased with the direction that she's taking it. And I'm just so excited for all of the events that she has planned and to compete at Miss USA for the first year that she's a president. You're talking about our headshot trip. We're going yeah. to Cancun. Yeah. Cancun, yeah. We're really excited, yeah. So all 51 Miss USA contestants are going to Cancun to get all of our headshots done and take videos for content and do some other photo shoots. And I am so excited. This has never been done before. So it's a really big deal that we're getting to do this and getting to meet all of the girls that I'm competing with at Miss USA before we even go to Miss USA is going to be so fun. It's going to bring us a lot closer together and to get this incredible vacation out of it is going to be so cool. <laughs> I think yeah, it, it's it can connect, so cool. co connect more with Miss uh, Kentucky, Miss Alaska, Miss Arkansas. As yeah, because well. I haven't gotten, I only think I've been able to meet like four or five of the contestants that I'm competing with. So then I'll get to meet everyone. I'm so excited. Yes, I have. I um, started right when I was crowned. So I have quite a few coaches that I'm working with for runway, working with the Queen's Conversation for interview and styling. So yeah, it's been a full-time job just preparing for Miss USA. Um, probably the interview. I always felt like my interview was really natural and it was, I love interview. It's my favorite part of competition, but Every time I practice for interview, it really pushes me out of my comfort zone. And it, it can be challenging to really try and get to know yourself because that's what it is. It's really asking those difficult questions so that you're prepared to answer anything, whatever they throw at you at Miss USA. So as it, it is my favorite aspect of competition, but the most challenging working on it. It it has made some things difficult and a lot of girls decided not to compete because they wanted to wait to be a title holder until the COVID pandemic was completely over. But my mindset was why would I put my life on hold just because the world has changed a little bit. So I have taken it in stride and have done a lot of Zoom meetings like this and a lot of posting on social media. And I'm really thankful that Montana has reopened actually within the last couple of months. We have it lifted their mask mandate and reopened completely. So I have been able to do a couple of bigger events safely. And I'm really thankful for that, that this summer I have had a couple of big events, but yeah, this winter I just did a lot of Zoom interviews and a lot of preparation and planning as much as I could over social media. Yeah, I have met quite a few of them. I was able to meet Deshauna Barber and Nia Sanchez and they're all really, really sweet. And I was able to meet, I think it was Pia, Miss um, Philippines, who's Miss USA 2015. I was able to meet her as well. It's a nice person. It's a, it's a nice- She's so sweet, yes. Okay. She's exactly what you would think that she would be. Just very sweet, stunning, of course, very personable. Oh, no. so actually Montana hasn't placed at Miss USA since 1958. Not, no. not even placed in semifinals. So we did have a Miss Teen USA winner in 2006. That was Katie Blair. So I'm really hoping that I'm going to break the 63 year not placing streak this year. I'm working really hard to do that. Yeah, I feel like every year that we don't place, of course, we've had so many girls, especially the last couple of years that have been so worthy of it, but the competition is so intense. You never know who's going to place and who's going to win because every girl who's competing at Miss USA is already a winner. They've already won their state and done the work and they're, or of course, everyone's gorgeous and well-spoken. So it's neck and neck with all 51 girls. So it's hard to know who's going to place and who's going to win. But yeah, I feel like every year that we have in place, the pressure builds a little bit as it goes from 60 years, 61, 62, and now it's 63 years that we haven't placed. Every year it adds up. There's just a little bit more pressure. <laughs> I just want to empower young girls and show that anybody can accomplish their dreams. If I could win Miss USA, 
a girl who was born and raised in a tiny town in Montana. And Montana hasn't even placed in six, 63 years. And then I go and win the title. I just think that would inspire girls everywhere to say, okay, I can sign up for this. I can apply to this school. I can do a pageant and I can achieve my dreams no matter what. I would love to start teaching self-defense classes right away in two of the United States and raise awareness for missing and murdered indigenous women and human trafficking and tell women how they can prevent themselves from being hurt and being in these situations. And if they do find themselves in that situation, how to defend themselves and how to get out of it. That would be my number one priority. So there's a couple things that I do. My main thing is that I'm a black belt in Chichido and I am a Krav Maga instructor. So I teach self-defense classes to young women. And the other things I do is I love, um, I raise awareness for missing and murdered indigenous women. Montana has one of the highest rates for that. And I love to raise awareness for children in foster care and what people can do to help children. I had foster siblings growing up and I volunteer as a CASA. So that's a court appointed special advocate for children in foster care. And there's over 400,000 children in foster care in the United States right now. And that number is only growing. So I love to tell people what they can do to help those children if they're not able to foster. You can do what I do and volunteer as a CASA or a big brother and sister, or just donate resources, toiletries, luggage. Just your time is so valuable to those children. Being able to rise up to the occasion, I think, is so important to any beauty queen, but especially during a pandemic, because our years are centered around doing in-person events. That's one of the main things that we do. And then that was taken away from all the girls who are competing these last two years. And so being adaptable and finding out a way to still be able to be present and be active in your community, even virtually. Like the other, I think it was last month, I did a virtual fundraiser for Watson's Children's Center in Missoula, Montana. And that was just me doing it virtually and then telling people where they can go and how to participate. And just, yeah, doing things virtually, I think is one of the biggest things that we can do this year, but yeah, rising yeah. to the occasion. <laughs> I love Instagram and TikTok is getting more popular and it's so fun. So it's really fun to make kind of glamorous videos as I'm getting ready for events or even just like funny dancing videos and my mom dressed up for Halloween as Joe Exotic last year. That's on my TikTok. So it's kind of, it's a place where people can go to escape and find humor, find nutrition tips or fashion and just stay involved with their community and the whole world. So I love TikTok right now. Yeah, I was kind of in between generations. So I was one of those generations that grew up without phones and without social media and then it was very new so people my age group and a little bit older found themselves having zero supervision on social media because it was so new and our parents weren't sure what it was and so now I think it's great that parents are more involved and can kind of track that and monitor it but yeah social media has been so huge so I think that it does have some negative negative aspects to it if it's not being used properly but I've really these last couple of years come into my own and have not really focused on the likes and the following as much as I have been really real and authentic to people on my platform, especially on the Miss Montana USA Instagram account, because so many young women are looking at that. So I love just posting what I'm doing day to day. The other day I posted a video of me and my dog swimming in the river after a workout. And I just really want it to be a positive place where girls can go to not compare themselves, not feel bad about themselves, but see authentic, see the authentic and real, their authentic and real selves, sorry. And also for it to be a place for people to connect, especially this year, we have not had a lot of person to person communications and people need that to be able to thrive. So having resources there and people to talk to. So my DM, I always say my DMs are always open. I love connecting with people. That's been a really good place to go this year. Have I dealt with haters on social media? Yeah, for sure. I, I kind of always have on and off, but this year with getting a ton of new followers, I really have. And the way that I deal with that is just ignoring it. If somebody wants to put me down or hurt me or doesn't like my social media, 
then my mindset is that they just don't get to see my social media. I, if I get a hateful comment or a hateful or inappropriate message, I just delete it right away. And I go and block that person so they can't reach out to me anymore rather than interacting with that person because that's all they want. They're hiding behind a screen and there's something going on with their heart where they think that that's okay to do that. So rather than engaging and making it worse, I just block and delete. <laughs> Am I desperate? I hate to admit it, but probably. <laughs> <laughs> Have you a, a beauty apps on your phone? Um, beauty apps for like to filter and edit how you look. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Um, no, I actually don't. <laughs> what is the last music have you listened on your phone? Um, hmm. I have been really into, I grew up loving Taylor Swift. So I was actually really into the new Olivia Rodrigo album. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the last photo taken with your phone. Last photo taken? Do you want me to show you? <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> I think it was at the river with my dogs. <laughs> yep, you can kind of see. I'm on a paddleboard and I don't know if you can see it. I'm on a paddleboard and my dog's on the paddleboard with me at the river, or at the lake last two, the other day. The last, the last follow on Instagram. On Instagram? Yeah. I think I posted, it was a picture of me and Miss Idaho USA. Um, Katerina. She Katerina. has become a really good friend of mine. Katerina, yeah. Yep, Katerina, Miss Idaho. So the last picture is the two of us. It's my next interview. Oh, she is so sweet. Her and I have become really close friends this year, and we're gonna, hopefully going to be able to be roommates at Miss USA. So I did a shout out to her on my social media and encouraged girls to sign up to compete at the pageants, and I was just showing off the friendships that I've made. So I posted a picture of her. We have uh, some questions. What is wow in, wow in your bag? One thing in my bag? Yeah. Hmm. What is wow in your bag? Because I have, I have requested the same question to Miss Tin Montana, and the answer is crazy. <laughs> she, oh, she, I'm sure it's crazy. What was her answer? She said me food. <laughs> She's not lying either. She always has a monster energy drink, a protein shake, and some kind of weird food in her bag. She's always eating. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And you, you met her. She's on hyperdrive all the time. She has so much energy. So I'm like taking her energy drinks away from her during the day. I'm like, you need to stop drinking those. And what? And for you, what is wow in your bag? Right now, I have bear spray in my bag because I just went camping. So my answer might be crazier than hers. What? You never know what you're going to run into when you go camping in Montana. What is the essential item you always put in your bag? Item I always put in my bag? Um, I always have gum with me. Everybody knows that I am the girl with gum. Everybody at work, if somebody needs gum, they're like, oh, just go find Jamie. I'll probably have like two or three packs of gum in my bag or in my car at all times. <laughs> what we'll never find in your bag? Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of like a bottomless pit. There's always something in there. So I don't know if anything's off limits. My secret talent. Yeah. I can train any animal. If I was going to compete at Miss America and I had to have a talent, I would probably bring my dog on stage. Never say never, but it's always been my goal. I've never really looked past Miss USA. To me, it's like the Super Bowl of pageants. It is such a big deal. So I'm like, I don't, I'm not sure what I, what pageants I would do afterwards, but I do see myself staying involved and volunteering with Pageants Northwest, my directors. I'm so thankful for them. And so I'm definitely always going to stay involved in some aspect, but I'm not quite sure if I'll compete again. You talk about Super Bowl, Super Bowl of pageants. Miss USA is your Super Bowl. In international contest, what is your Super Bowl pageant? 
Miss Universe, Miss. for sure. I also really like tuning into um, Miss Earth and Miss International. Those pageants are really cool to watch too. My ultimate dream, um, that, as far as like school and everything goes, my dream would be able to be outside all the time and travel around Montana and work with animals as much as I can. I just love being outside, love being with animals. So I'd love to be a traveling canine and rehabilit or canine and equestrian rehabilitation practitioner. That would be incredible. A message for my fans. I just always love sharing, just be uniquely yourself. There's only one you, God made you uniquely and perfectly you. So just be proud of yourself. And I know this year has been, these last two years have been so hard and felt really isolating. So always reach out, find hotlines around you. And my DMs are always open. So I just love getting to know my fans and you are just so special and so important and loved. Hmm. I, I am going to bring a gift for all the Miss USA contestants and I would love to find something to do with the national parks. So I do always keep, I actually have from one of my favorite lakes, I have a little rock that I have with me from Glacier National Park, one of my visits. And so that's kind of a random item that I keep in my bag. I love little keepsakes and things like that. So yeah, that would be it. 